I can't help but notice the resurgency in popularity of DWM. In the last couple of years, a lot of people are giving DWM a serious try. DWM is a very old tiling window manager. It's been around forever. And really, a couple of years ago, two, two and a half years ago, I started giving DWM a little bit of love on my YouTube channel, giving it some coverage. I'm starting to see a lot more Linux YouTubers also giving DWM a serious try. And now that we have all these people getting into DWM, all these new users trying it out for the very first time, some of them are having problems configuring it to their liking. I'm getting support questions. And here lately, I've been getting a lot of questions about the panel within DWM because by default, it's a very plain panel. You can't do a lot with it. There's no real configuration options, at least not in the standard DWM config file, which is the config.h file. But what I do for my panel in DWM is I use a third party program called DWM Blocks. Let me show you. So I'm going to pull up a VM here. This is a VM of ArchBang Linux, which is an Arch based Linux distribution. And all I did was I went and grabbed the source code for DWM from suckless.org, the website for all of Suckless software. And I did a quick git clone of the DWM source code and a sudo make install. And this is unpatched vanilla DWM and by default the alt key is the modifier in DWM I did change it so the super key is my modifier key and super shift enter should bring up a terminal so super shift enter a couple of times you see we have the default master and stack layout if I do super shift C that closes the window with focus and I could close all those windows super shift enter one more time will bring up a terminal and you see the panel is very plain. It doesn't give you a whole lot of information, but it gives you what you need, which is what workspace you're currently on, whether there's a window open on it or not. We have our current layout. The, these symbols here tell you that you're in the master and stack layout. If I click on it, now we would be in floating layout. I'm going to click back off of that to get back into master and stack. Then the highlighted portion here is letting us know what the title of the window with focus currently is. And the title is fish because we're in the fish shell in the terminal. And then at the far right, we have the version of DWM, which is DWM-6.2. Now this area here is actually the part of the panel that we can configure. So we can actually overwrite this here and we can set that to be any text we want. And it, it can be difficult to do this because how you do this, well, really, for what most people want to do, you're, you're going to have to use a little bit of shell scripting. You're going to have to write a shell script that replaces this text here with whatever output that you want to be displayed in that section. So let me zoom in here in the ST terminal, unless you've changed the key bindings, control shift page up and control shift page down for zoom in and out. So control shift page up will zoom me way in here because I want you guys to see the commands I'm going to run. I may do some scripting here as well. So I'm in the fish shell right now. I actually should switch over to bash if I want to do some scripting because fish has some different syntax. So let me switch over to bash and then I'm going to run this command here, x set root space dash name. And what this command does, it changes the name of the x11 root window. So if you're inside a x display environment, um, imagine everything you're seeing on the screen is inside a window. And that is the X root window. You can actually use this command here to set a name for that root window, that X root window. I don't know like a real world example of why you would ever need this, but the fact that this command and this flag exists, the suckless guys have that actually output to this top right corner. That's how you overwrite what's going on here with DWM-6.2. You run this command and it will overwrite that and whatever we set the X11 root window name to, that's what will appear. So let's do X set root space dash name space and then I'm gonna wrap this in quotes, hello comma world exclamation and then in the quotes there and you see we now have hello world being displayed in the panel. Now, of course, you don't have to just type plain text like that. You could actually run a command and have the output from that command set the root window name. So let's do x set root dash name. And this time I'm going to do a dollar symbol. And why don't we run a command? How about I'm going to run uptime. This is how long the computer has been running since the uh, last reboot or the last restart. It didn't like that because I think I also needed to wrap this in double quotes in there. And now we have the output from the uptime command, which is uptime, the number of users, and the load average of our computer. Now, you can see how this starts getting complicated because the more information you want to put in this 
the more you really you have to write a, a lengthy script for this because you probably didn't want all of this information from uptime. And it's going to be the same for most commands. You don't want all of the output. Typically, you just want certain pieces of it. For example, maybe I didn't want all of this. You know, maybe I don't want the uptime. Up maybe I only wanted the load average. Maybe I only wanted the last part of the load average. Well, to accomplish that, I mean, we have to start you know, using things like Sid, I'm going to have to pipe this through Sid, and then I'm going to do some single quotes inside the single quotes. I'm going to do a S. Really, I just want to grab that very last field. So I'm going to do S slash, and then I'm going to do a period, asterisk, comma, and then two more slashes. Uh, too many slashes there. I only need two at the end. Let's hit enter. Yeah, and then now I just get the last field of that load average, 0.0. .0. Now imagine that I had about eight or 10 things I wanted to display here, and they all involved, you know, me taking the output of a command and maybe piping them through grip, sid, awk, maybe multiple <laughs> instances of grip, sid, or awk. You know, you really end up writing a proper shell script to just display a little bit of text here. And by default, you can only display plain text in DWM's uh, panel. You're not going to have any kind of Unicode glyphs. You can't have colored emojis or anything like that without uh, jumping through some hoops, doing some patching, and installing some extra packages on your machine. Those of you running an Arch-based system, which is why I'm using this ArchBang VM, there is a, a package available in the AUR that will help you get those colored emojis and Unicode characters to properly display in your subless programs. Now, typically what you want to do, you don't want to have to open a terminal and type stuff to actually have it output in your panel, right? You just want all that to be done auto-magically. <laughs> and how you do that is with an auto-start script of some kind. Maybe you add what you want here with the xset root dash name command to your xinit rc file. Those of you that use start x to log into DWM. There's some creative methods to get this to work right, but what makes this a bit easier is just use a third-party program called DWM Blocks. It makes all of this so much easier. So let me pull up DWM Blocks here in a web Web browser here so I'm gonna just search for DWM blocks and I don't think there's like one standard DWM blocks version anywhere a lot of people have taken it and modified it and done their own thing but this one here by Torin Phil I believe this is the one that I initially downloaded myself and I've modified to my particular needs and just grab this particular guy's version of DWM blocks so I could do a quick git clone and I could actually install this really fast here let me get back into the terminal here I'm gonna run a git clone and we're gonna run that URL behind it and this will clone that particular DWM blocks repository and then let's cd into the DWM blocks directory there and do an ls so you guys can see there's really not much to it there's really two files there's the DWM blocks.c file and then there's blocks.def.h which is your configuration file and I'm just going to leave it as is by default so I'm going to do a sudo make clean install assuming I can type install correctly and there we go and now let's run DWM blocks from the terminal here and that is the output from this particular program if you wanted to see the configuration file let me do vim blocks.def.h and it's set up in a very easy to use format. He's got uh, these comments here. He's telling you wrap everything in the curly braces here. And then he has mem colon as the first field. You see mem colon. And basically think of that as a label or he's saying it could be an icon. You could add a Unicode glyph or a colored emoji here if you had DWM patched to accept such a thing. And then the next section is the command, and he's running the free command, which is letting us know how much free memory is available on the system. He's piping that through awk because he just wants certain fields printed out. He wants field three, followed by a slash, followed by field two, and then he's piping all of that through sid and doing a substitution command in sid. And then he's also running the date command down here to get the date and time, and he formatted it exactly the way he wanted wanted it. There are two other columns to talk about here as well. There's update interval and update signal. 
and that's these numbers here. So update interval obviously is how often these commands are ran again to be updated. So he's running the free command for the memory command every 30 seconds. He's running the date command every five seconds. It's very easy to configure this thing. I mean, I could go in here if I wanted to and, you know, paste a new line and I could edit this. Maybe I wanted to do uptime. So in this particular field for icon or label, I could do something like UPT colon, kind of like what he did with mem colon for the other command here. And then what I could do is he delete all of that. I don't need any of that. And then in quotes here, run the uptime command again. Maybe I wanted to pipe it through Sid for some reason. Maybe I, I only wanted the load average. Maybe I only wanted the uptime. But for now, let's just run the standard uptime command. And of course, in that with a comma. And then we needed another field. We needed the update interval for uptime. I don't really need that to run that often. That's every 60 seconds, you know, every minute is probably fine. And then finally, we needed to end that with some curly braces and a comma one more time. And then if I write and quit, and once again, do a sudo make it clean install, and let's rerun the DWM blocks command and see if that actually updates. And it's actually the same thing. So what is the problem here? Uh, because I have blocks.def and blocks.h, we need to remove blocks.h. Typically, when you run sudo make install on these suckless programs, remove the config.h file and just leave config.def.h, which in DWM blocks here, it's blocks.def.h and blocks.h. So let me remove that and then run the sudo make install one more time. And we have an error. And it looks like I forgot the comma between the 60 and the 0 there. My bad on that. So let me get back into this file. And it's very easy to correct that. Add that comma, colon, WQ to write and quit. Pseudo make clean install. But we have to remove the blocks.h file again. Pseudo make clean install finally. And now let's run DWM blocks. And it updates, but we have two of them running. We have this one, but just for a second, you saw the longer one that included the uptime also flash on the screen. That is one of the things you can't just overwrite the X set root name without you having multiple instances of them running without a reboot of the machine. Just logging out of DWM actually won't fix the problem. I'd actually have to reboot the machine to actually change this stuff. But before I reboot, what I really want to show you guys is you guys go over to my GitLab and those of you trying out DWM and if you want a, a panel with DWM blocks and it's already patched for emojis and glyphs and everything, go to my GitLab at gitlab.com slash DWT1 and go to the projects link here and choose all of my projects because I have like 12 or 15 repositories and by default it's just going to show you a few of them but you want to take a look at all of my repositories and I have builds of a lot of the suckless programs including my own build of DWM and my build of DWM blocks. Well, all you need to do is just git clone these on any Linux distribution, run a sudo make install, and you've got my builds of this thing. Those of you that are on Arch or an Arch-based Linux distribution, it's even easier than that because I have these packaged up in the AUR, the Arch user repository, so you can install them using yay. So if I go over here to the desktop and let me launch a terminal here, and this is the ST terminal here. And in my build of ST, I use Control Shift J and K for zooming in and out. And what I want to do is just show you guys yay space dash capital S. And then let's install some stuff. How about DWM dash distro tube dash get and then DWM blocks dash distro tube. Let me just do a tab complete there dash get. And then if you want my build of ST, which you probably do, <laughs> do ST dash distro tube dash get. And you probably also want my D menu, D menu dash distro tube dash get. And if you want the colorful shell scripts that appear at random in my terminal, make sure you grab shell dash color dash scripts. Yeah, let's install those. And I'm kind of curious to see if they all build correctly. I have, actually haven't installed some of them in a while as far as from the AUR. Now, one of the things that makes the emoji support and the, the Unicode glyph support work is I have a hard dependency for DWM and DWM blocks for libxftbgra. That is a, 
AUR package, and that is what you need to install to make sure that you get the support for the glyphs that you need. Uh, I didn't type my password correctly. All right, and it looks like all five or six of those programs actually installed correctly. So let me close that terminal. And I actually logged into my version of DWM. So this is my DWM, and this is my DWM blocks here, uh, my ST terminal. And, of course, we got the random shell color scripts. Uh, it's very easy to get that up and running. I do super shift enter. Here is my D menu that's got some kind of cool colorations and, and patches and everything. So that is an easy way for you guys to get up and running with DWM and DWM blocks. Now, if you use my DWM, you will find the configuration files for all of my suckless builds. If you installed them through the AUR, you will find them in the slash opt directory. So CD into slash opt by doing LS, you see I have all of those programs. That's where they store their source code after installation. So if I CD into DWM blocks, dash distro tube dash get do an ls you will see there's the config file blocks dot def dot h let's do vim and you see there it is it is setting these icons which are just unicode characters and then it's running these commands which are shell scripts that are in the dwm blocks directory that's in the slash op directory and they're updating however many seconds I felt like they needed to update like the the script here which just tells me what the kernel version is I don't need that to run every second right every 360 seconds is perfectly fine same thing with the pack update this just tells me how many updates are available on my system right now only two updates are available so i've done a recent update uh, other things i have i have the uptime i have uh, how much ram is being used versus how much ram is available on the system i also have my current volume percentage and the date and time so if you wanted to edit this, you just edit this to whatever it is you want and then do a you know, write and quit out of Vim. Uh, you're going to need root privileges, of course, since this is in the slash op directory. So you'd have to do sudo name of editor, name of file. And then after all that's done in this directory, run a sudo make install. Boom, you're done. Now, before I go, I want to thank a few special people. I want to thank the producers of the show. Devin, Fran, Gabe, Corbinian, Mitchell, Lakami, Arch5530, Chris, Chuck, Donnie, Dylan, Gregory, Lewis, Paul, Pick, PM, Scott, and Willie. They are the producers of the show. They are my highest tier patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this quick look at DWM blocks would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen as well. All these names you're seeing on the screen. These are all my supporters over on Patreon because... This channel would not be possible without you guys, the community. If you'd like to support my work, look for DistroTube over on Patreon. Alright guys, peace.